Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I am Jeff Gambit from Text Expander, and with me is Matt Patterson from Help Scout. Matt, I am so happy to be here with you today. Fantastic. I'm excited to be here. And uh, and monitoring the question room, we have Mike Lysing from uh, from the Text Expander sales team. Mike, thank you for joining us as well. You bet. Thanks for having me. And and for everyone that's here, this is this is great to have you all here. This is our our um, uh, Help Scout and Text Expander co webinar where we're going to talk about how to build your toolkit for uh, for your support, uh, either as support you're doing yourself or support for your team. And uh, and we think this will be a, a lot of fun. Uh, before we dive in, first I want to make sure everyone can hear us okay. So if you want to uh, to give us a, a a yes in the in the question room, that would be great. Also, uh, we do have a uh, oh, looks like people can hear us. That is awesome. We do have a public snippet group that we have created for the webinar. So if you're already a Text Expander user. And uh, and you want to go and and grab that uh, that snippet set. Uh, hopefully you saw a link when you got your welcome message for joining the webinar. If not, you can go to textexpander.com, then go to support, and then click on uh, public groups and look for the um, the building your support toolkit public group. Subscribe to that, and uh, and you'll have the resources that we'll be talking about, along with some sample snippets that you uh, can use to to start building up your support uh, um, responses. Okay, so I will start with the first question that uh, that we always get, which is, will there be a recording? of this webinar? And the answer is yes. Yes, there will. So what will happen is uh, after the webinar wraps up, you will get an email and it will have a link to uh, to the recording of this webinar. Feel free to watch the, the webinar anytime you want. And if you know other people that you think would get value out of uh, uh, seeing the recording, please feel free to share the link with them too, because the important thing here is that everyone learns something and gets some value out of this and and ends up with a, a better support toolkit in, in the process. All right, so I'm also curious, where are people tuning in from today? It's it's always fun to see the various places that that people are at. So drop that into the question room also. And uh, this is great. So on Ontario, uh, Oregon, North Carolina, Maine, um, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, Surrey, Vancouver, Washington. Uh, this is great. I'm seeing people from from all around. Um, uh, oh, awesome! Belgium, no way. Malta. Uh, this is great. Awesome. I love that we have people tuning in from so many places. And uh, since we have people from so many places, Matt, I also have to thank you for uh, getting up so early to be part of this. Yeah, well, I am from a place uh, that's quite far away from you down here near uh, Sydney in Australia. It's very yes, early. So it's great to have you. All right. So let's let's hop in and uh, and get this going. Also, if you have questions, please put them into the chat room. Mike will be watching. And uh, and when we get to the end of the seminar, we will also be answering questions that have come up. So we will do our best to make sure that everyone gets the questions answered. And Matt, I think we should uh, start off by, uh, by well, what, why didn't you tell me why uh, we need to have a support system. Uh, why do we need a support toolkit? Yes. Well, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think it's easy if you go searching for like, how do I do support? It's easy to come up with a lot of answers, including Help Scout as like, here is a tool that can help you with support, uh, which they can, they can all help you in different ways. But uh, everyone has a, a preference 
or a way of working or a mindset around what they believe good support is and some tools are going to be better at providing uh, uh, kind of assisting you in delivering that sort of support and some tools are probably you're going to have to find yourself working against a little bit and so uh, part of what I wanted to do here is just to talk about how you make those decisions about what tools you want to use uh, what's a good tool for you and to to put together at least an understanding of this is how I like to work and these are the tools that work with me work well with my style and this is something I could take even if I was in support in one company and I wanted to go to another company I could take those principles and apply them to maybe a different set of tools but use things in a way that makes sense so it's about making yourself more effective um, more productive and just happier um, and I was thinking about this recently when I was back in the days when you could go and get a haircut so this was a while ago. Um, I went to the, to my barber and I got uh, I sat down there with him and all he really wanted to talk about, and I don't really want to talk about anything to be honest when I'm at the barber, but he really wanted to talk about his new uh, clippers that he'd got. He was really excited about them. He pointed them out to me. Uh, he was super excited because he'd been, been able to get his own, like he made his own choice of clippers this time. So he runs this barber shop, but he didn't own it. Uh, and the previous clippers that had been using the owner had bought the owner was not a hairdresser of any kind and so just kind of bought what looked like here's some clippers i can buy at a reasonable price um, and this guy had, he'd finally got to the point where he'd convinced the boss to let him go out and replace them with some that he would choose and he was so excited about his new tools even though they did exactly the same things they, they performed differently uh, they suited his style of hair cutting better and he was just he was just telling me how much it was going to make a difference to his everyday life, just doing the work a little bit easier and to the customers because he felt like he could deliver better product, better service with uh, these clippers. And it just made me think, yeah, like everyone in every job has their own sort of toolkit that really speaks to them. And uh, it just really uh, triggered with me that day. Like it's not just us in the support world, it's everybody. That's awesome. And, uh, and you mentioned something that I think is important for people to keep in mind. We'll be talking about things, uh, tools that will be uh, portable to a degree because you can build a toolkit that you can take with you no matter where you go. And, uh, and that way, if you're working at one company today and, uh, and then decide to move somewhere else, you'll still have a, a toolkit that will be helpful to you and will hopefully enhance whatever it is that, that you're doing at, at the new company. Um, I'd also like to point out one of the reasons that, that Matt and I have teamed up today is because uh, uh, Text Expander, we're actually using Help Scout to, to uh, manage our support calls that we get. And, uh, and Matt, I believe that you are Text Expander users? Yeah, we are. Certainly all of the support team and other people in the company at Help Scout will use text expander and I personally have used it across at least three jobs now and uh, yeah it's 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 a really nice um, uh, relationship so I'm, I'm glad we're getting to do this and uh, and actually before we go any farther um, we should probably explain exactly what help scout does for people because I'm assuming that we have people tuning in that are not familiar with help scout and we have people that are not familiar with text expander Sure. So Help Scout, it's, we're a, a fully remote company of people making uh, customer service software. So there's the, the help desk kind of element to it. You can email in and, and manage the customer communications in that way. There's uh, live chat and messaging tools. There's the knowledge base uh, system. So all sorts of tools all, all around the idea of delivering customer service. And we have a particular uh, philosophy of, of what we think good service is and I think that's why working with text expander is a really good fit I think we, we have a similar approach to uh, the importance of that communication aspect and how tweaking how how easy it is to communicate with people um, actually can improve those relationships with customers and text expander is a tool that lets you take all the things that you have to type repetitively which is something that happens a lot when you're dealing with support and uh, it, it lets you store all those things in a single place and then assign abbreviations to everything that you need to type so that instead of having to type uh, uh, long phrases or multiple paragraphs over and over again 
you can just type an abbreviation and it automatically expands out into whatever it is that you actually wanted to say. So it could be something as simple as a phone number an email, or an email address or something very complex like a, a form you need to fill out so that you, you can give someone a very detailed response to, uh, to a support question and not have to type any more than you absolutely have to. So it's something that for me saves me hours of typing literally every month. And it's it's something that our own support team is using in conjunction with Help Scout to make sure that we're giving people the the correct answers to their questions. And uh, and then whenever something gets updated, then we can update that in text expander and everyone on our support team will have the new correct answer and we don't have to worry about is everyone on the same page and is everyone giving out the correct answers to support questions okay. yeah 100 percent. i i just like to say <clears throat> I, I really like the combination of uh, the text expander lets me have both shared things where it can be updated by someone else controlled and we have consistency across people and you can combine it with your own personal uh, individual bits and pieces so that uh, you just end up with a nice flexibility where you don't end up everyone doesn't have to sound the same just because they're using a tool which provides that kind of uh, text snippet functionality yeah and and for us being able to have a way to manage the support requests that come in and to be able to to glean all kinds of valuable information out of the support questions we're getting is really great. So uh, so Help Scout is awesome for that for us. Uh, Matt, so one of the things that's key to this whole uh, webinar today is building the support toolkit. And I'm curious, what what exactly do we mean by a support toolkit? I would say, for me, it's a combination of like actual tools, so software systems usually in the kind of online customer service uh, that we do. Uh, so there are specific products like Text Expander, like Help Scout, and, uh, and some others that we will definitely get into a little bit uh, or at least mention. But the support toolkit, I think about it as also um, I have a kind of set of activities or maybe a, a style of working that I've developed over a long period of time. So my job before being at Help Scout. Uh, was actually running a customer service team for another software company, uh, Campaign Monitor, where I tell you I used Text Expander a million times because I could never type campaign correctly the first time. Uh, Campagon, I would always type. But <laughs> um, over that period of time, there was like nearly a decade there and then a few years here at Help Scout. There's just certain ways that I like to work. And so I think of, as part of my toolkit as like uh, approaches to how I do service and how I read customers' questions and how I respond to them. Uh, and I think that all fits under the, for me, the, the banner of the, a toolkit, like a set of skills and actual tools uh, that combine together to make me more effective. Now, for, for me, there are the tools that you use, which can be apps, they can be services, they, they can be other things that uh, that you choose to add in to enhance what it is that you do. And uh, then it's also finding the, the uh, I suppose, philosophy or, or mm -hmm. mindset that helps you to be able to, uh, to support people most effectively. So there, there's that whole combination of things there. And, uh, and I'm curious, Matt, what uh, what it is that that you do to help to choose the right tools. Yeah, I've been thinking about this as I, I'm also the kind of person who likes to like, oh, maybe a new task manager will fix all of my problems. Um, mm -hmm. There is that I do have that tendency, and so I'd go through this process a fair bit of like, and I used to do. I used to be much worse at this at swapping around. But I think uh, now what I've come to understand for myself at least is that it's not choosing the right tool. It's not about looking at the big list of features and trying to like find the one that has the most number of ticks in that column. Um, 
I think often the really good tools, certainly for professionals, have quite frequently have fewer features. So um, I think about our washing machine here at home. I have uh, three children. There's a lot of washing to get through. Uh, and when we went looking for a washing machine last time, you know, you go in the store and they have the ones that have a million dials or connect to your phone. And I don't know why they do that. Uh, send you messages, I guess, about your washing, uh, how much money you've left in the washing machine this month, probably. But <clears throat> what we actually found was like the most reliable, uh, the highest capacity and the kind of the best performing ones were actually the semi-professional type ones, the ones they use in laundromats and things. And so we ended up with this enormous monster machine that has one dial essentially on it. And it's, it goes into four positions and that's all you get. And then you have a button to press go. Uh, but that's a, that's a professional tool that has many fewer features. And so I think I've kind of taken that philosophy and, and tried to think about what are the exact things I need to do? Uh, how do I want to, you know, in which elements do I want the most control over how this tool works and how am I going to use it? And then trying to find like a very refined set of tools as opposed to uh, some things which offer to do everything in the world for me. And for me, when I'm looking for new tools or any tools to help me accomplish a goal, I start with a list. And that and that list is what are the things that I that I need this tool or, or service to do? And then I go looking for the things that match my list. And uh, and for me, that's proven to work uh, pretty well overall, because that way, instead of getting overwhelmed or potentially far too excited about a huge list of features, many of which I may not need or be interested in, I can focus on the things that that actually matter to the to the task at hand. 100%. And I think uh, uh, we, we were talking about this earlier and we sort of started with this and we found our way to this set of kind of principles of like, what is a good tool? I think it, this kind of came out organically as we were discussing it uh, before this webinar, right? And so maybe we should launch into that a little bit. That sounds um, great. So I think what what is a principle for choosing the right set of tools? Um, first one that I would say is that it, it's a good tool needs to be something you can actually learn. Um, so what does that mean? In the software world, really we're talking about, it's got to have really great um, resources for either teaching yourself or you know a great support team or some community webinars or whatever it is, some way that I can get value from this tool because paying for the tool and you, know, you, you download it and open it up or you log into it, and in theory, you can do lots of things, but if you can't actually do those things, you're not going to get anywhere. So um, I think learnable means, yeah, good support training, some kind of interface that makes sense. It doesn't have to be intuitive immediately or something you can start using immediately straight away, but that when you're actually using it, the interface isn't getting in your way all the time. Uh, and maybe it has access to other people who can help you, um, which is something that I really enjoy about the text expander actually is the, I can go and find snippets and snippet libraries from other people that have done things that maybe I would never think about doing or using the product in that way. And then I can just like one click, get that into my system and experiment with it and learn from it and apply it to my particular set of circumstances. Awesome. And, uh, and uh, building on that, um, the data that these tools are generating that you're collecting with it, uh, but that's important too, and it's important how that data is being treated. And I would love your take on that. Yeah, so you're right. Like you, you're putting a lot of time and effort, and often a lot of information into these tools. And you want to make sure that, well, for if whatever reason, if this tool goes away, or if I go away from it, or if I can't use it anymore, that that information is not stuck in there. So some way that it's interoperable with other software or that you, know, you can export in some format that can be used elsewhere. I know uh, Text Expander can do that. Um, you, can, you can get all your snippets back out. You're not losing that information, even if you stop using it. Uh, Help Scout, same way. All of that uh, enormous amount of customer information that goes through a support desk, it's an incredible resource. Uh, 
and it, yeah, you just can't use something where it's going to be locked up there because you're relying then too much on this tool is going to be around for me at a, at a price that I can afford uh, in a practical manner forever. Like the chances of that of any system lasting that long, not great. So interoperability and, and data portability, hugely important. Uh, and then also another important aspect is how well will this tool grow with you? Is it something that uh, that handles one specific thing and and uh, and as your needs grow or change, it won't accommodate that? Or is it something that as your skill set changes or your needs change, it can it can grow with you? And for for me, Help Scout fits that very well because it's a tool that that we can use to manage our uh, our uh, support calls. But it's also a tool that lets us do things like uh, like set up uh, uh, support articles and then manage that content and grow that content and edit that content and then go and look at the information about how people are using those articles and uh, and then also to get information about uh, the types of of requests people have of us for information and uh, and how to do things which then gives us another way to figure out what else do we need to add to our knowledge base Right, yeah, so there are definitely tools that you can choose where, yeah, you will be able to use them in a different way next year than you can use them today because your skills have changed. You've learned something, you're operating maybe in a different way and you can use this tool at a new level. Um, although I would say there are some, sometimes the tool that you want, it does exactly one thing, but it does it so well that what it's doing is enabling you to to learn more. Like this, <laughs> Like when my dad comes to my house and fixes something that I have tried to fix before, and he's using the same set of tools, but he has he's applying different skills to those tools, and that tool now is able to perform at a much higher level uh, because he's he's bringing to it knowledge and he's using it in the right way or in a, in a uh, a place that I wouldn't necessarily have been able to do the same thing. Um, but because it's a you know it's a high quality tool, it doesn't break when a when a person who has more skills and more knowledge comes and tries to use it, it still performs well. So I think it's, yeah, picking a tool for your tool belt that is, um, it's additive to you. It's not uh, restrictive. Um, and I think about that, that as a principle, build on your school's skills. It should also, the tools that you use should also maybe, um, it's not about replacing you in the process. So certainly in the support world, there are tools that will, kind of advertise themselves as like, you can get rid of your support team, essentially like we can get rid of some people and then this thing will do the support for you. Uh, and generally speaking, those are not great for the end user, like the customers who are trying to get help. Um, whereas if there is a tool, which is instead, we will make your support team much more productive so they can talk to more people, they can spend more of their time having those conversations uh, at an, in an effective way and the tool enables them to do more with the same amount of time or to do new things that they couldn't do before. Uh, those are really useful tools to consider. Uh, Help Scout is one of them, not the only one. Awesome. And uh, and then to add to that, uh, it's okay to, uh, to look at your tools as something that is, uh, I don't want to say temporary, but, uh, but something that at some point could be replaced. If you find that a tool that works today or worked yesterday isn't meeting your needs, then uh, then maybe it means you've outgrown a tool and it's time to find something else. And, and that's okay. You don't have to stick with, I've always used this, therefore I must always continue to use this. No, that's right. You the better, the more deeply you understand what it is that you're trying to get done, the better you can choose which is the appropriate tool for this thing that I'm trying to do now. And that may not be the tool that was the best fit yesterday. Um, so this is, it's a self-awareness as well as a, a good choice of tools. All right. Um, I think we should uh, talk about how we're using each other's tools because I think that would be helpful for people to get a better understanding of the sorts of things they can do. So, uh, so uh, let's start with with how Help Scout is using Text Expander. 
Yeah, uh, so I, at HelpScout, I don't actually do customer service most of the time. I'm more on the marketing side, but um, I know that I talked to our support team to make sure I understood how they use it. And certainly my experience using Text Expander in support work that I do here and at my previous jobs. Um, so we use, HelpScout has built in like saved replies. So we, off, there is a lot of repetitive sort of answers in, in customer service. Uh, and so we have in HelpScout, we have a tool built in that here is this existing answer we've written to this particular question that we get a lot and you can plug it in. Uh, and that's super helpful, but we use that in combination with Text Expander often so that we can personalize, you can easily add individual snippets in there or tweak things to your personal style uh, without affecting anyone else's answers. And we keep the core there in HelpScout, but then we add Text Expander on top of it. Uh, also super helpful for just in quickly inserting really the kind of links that you're constantly referring to or little sets of instructions, just little bits and pieces that uh, you're often using. Um, things like if you're in customer service at HelpScout and you, you get someone who's reporting a bug or making a feature request, and we want to capture that in a specific format and put it into another tool, Text Expander uh, is really helpful for here is providing the format for me and let me just plug in the little bits that are relevant in this particular case and save that off without having to go somewhere else, find a find the template or fill in a long form. Uh, it's just a really quick way of capturing something in a consistent format. That's super helpful. Um, what else? Fixing typos, like I mentioned, everyone's got their own individual things that they just can't type for whatever reason. Uh, Text Expander is great for doing that, especially if you turn that sound off and people can't hear you on the call making mistake over and over again, the little bloop that happens <laughs> when you get shamed publicly. Um, <clears throat> uh, and things like, yeah, again, customer service, you're talking to people all day. You, you probably have your own preferred like sign-offs and welcomes that you start and finish your emails with. Uh, and those are great. And Text Expander is great for those. Uh, the thing I would find is that if you're speaking to the same person multiple times, um, you don't want to use that same exact greeting and sign off every time because it comes a little bit more clear that you're not typing it manually. Uh, but Text Expander has a really nice way of giving me like four or five different variations on the same thing that I can just trigger. If I recognize that person's name, I'll like, I'll use one of my alternates for this person so that I'm just keeping it a little bit more um, unstructured and a little bit more personalized. Awesome. Okay. Um, to talk about how Text Expander is using Help Scout, actually, I need to share my screen because it's a lot easier for people to understand what, what I'm doing if I can actually show them. So let's make sure we have some screen sharing happening. Okay. So when uh, when we're using Text Expander in conjunction with Help Scout, um, we we actually have to start with the Text Expander application, and then we start by or started by figuring out what are the most common questions that we're answering, and then we made snippets for those and, and a snippet being a uh, a text response that we can uh, can automatically expand just by typing an abbreviation so uh, so for an example um, if i needed to give someone say a phone number then um, then i could have an abbreviation like dot phone and then now they have the appropriate phone number that they need to call um, and uh, and then if it's something uh, uh, more involved, like like um, I need to craft uh, a full response where uh, maybe we start off with uh, with an introduction as as part of the response, then I can have an abbreviation where I get a pop up like this. And then I can type in the name of the person I'm responding to and then choose the product that, that they need some help with and, uh, and then click OK. And I've already started my whole response. And then from there, maybe it turns out that, that uh, Matt's problem is he's just not sure how to install Text Expander. So then I can uh, have an abbreviation that has all the instructions. And then when I'm done, then I uh, I went to wrap this email up, 
So then I'll have an abbreviation that I type. And uh, and maybe this one gives me some options with with how I'm going to uh, to wrap up the email, and I can choose if I, uh, you know how uh, casual I want to wrap this up. So we'll just leave it as regards, and uh, and then have some more for an email signature. Click OK, and then have a spot automatically set up. I can just type in my name if this is a snippet that other people are using as well. And I've been able to craft an entire support response to Matt in uh, less time than it actually took to explain what it is that uh, that that I was doing. So uh, um, since I've actually used these snippets to create this, I, I will show you exactly what we've done. So I started with this part right here and uh, if i come back over to the text expander app there we go and i click on this this is the snippet that uh, that uh, i just expanded and it's set up so that it has a place to put in a name and, uh, and a place to select the products and uh, and to show how easy this is to set up actually i'll just go ahead and remake it so let me copy that so I don't have to do quite as much typing. I'll just go ahead and make a new snippet real quick. And I did that by clicking the new snippet button right there. And it'll show up automatically in my uh, in my snippet list. We'll just paste that in where I want that name to be. I'll just go ahead and highlight it and get rid of it. I'll come to the fill-ins menu and I'll choose single line field. And I will give a name to this field so that I have a visual cue what it is that I'm going to uh, to be putting in here when I actually expand this. And then uh, and then I had that pop up where I selected the product name. So that's right here. So I'll just go ahead and highlight that and get rid of that and come back to the fill ins menu and choose pop up menu. We'll give this one a name. I'll call it product and uh, Let's go ahead and uh, come down to these option fields. And uh, I can type in our product names. There we go. And the one that has the, the highlighted radio button, that will always be the default choice. So if I click that, it changes. And uh, there we go. I've put a couple options in. If there was uh, something else that I wanted to add in, I can just click that plus and get a new field and add in another product, click OK, give it an abbreviation, and uh, I'm going to put punctuation at the beginning so that I know I won't accidentally type this because I always uh, have a space after punctuation. There we go, so I've given it an abbreviation, and now to see this in action, what we just created, if I go semicolon sup dot intro and oh, it helps if I uh, type the abbreviation that I actually created which is semicolon sup dot into and uh, there we go now I've got a place where I can fill in Matt's name I have that pop up and click OK so I was able to make a snippet pretty quickly that has uh, that has uh, several features built into it and uh, and then use it very quickly as well and save myself potentially a lot of typing. Um, that, uh, that end part where, uh, where we wrapped it up, where I type sup.by, this has a little bit more in it. And, uh, and this is nice if you are working with, say, a team of people. And uh, what you can do is something like this, where if I'm back in the text expander app, you can see the part where it says, let me know if you need more help. I have a pop-up where I'm choosing how I want to wrap up that, that uh, message. I set up a place that automatically put the cursor where my name was going to go. And then right here, it says email sig. This is actually a separate snippet. And uh, and it's nested. So if I go and look at that snippet, email.sig, 
I can see that I have a snippet that has uh, just some basic info in. And what's great about this is that if you're working with with uh, with a team of people, so you'd be using the Teams version of Text Expander, which lets you uh, uh, have multiple people that that can all share snippets. You can have someone that's managing those snippets to make sure you always have the right things. You can have someone that's going in and updating something like uh, like a tagline on an email signature on a regular basis, so that it has maybe a, a new knowledge base article that people might be interested in, or maybe there's some sort of promotion that your company is running, and you want people to know about that. Someone can go and update that snippet, and everyone else has it nested in their signature, and it's, that means it's automatically updated for everyone immediately, and they never have to worry about, did they have the right information? And it's the same thing when you're actually creating a snippet that you're going to, uh, to, to be sharing with the whole team. If that gets updated, everyone will have the updated information. So uh, uh, real quick, I, I will uh, just go ahead and make a snippet that, that does a, a how-to sort of thing. And uh, and the the rule to work with here is figure out what things people are uh, are asking most and make those snippets first. And then as uh, as you figure out other things that you feel will be important to have as uh, as responses, make those as well. And then you can build out your your collection of snippets without feeling like you're being overwhelmed. So for example, let's let's say that we have a question about um, uh, uh, let's say we get a question on a regular basis about whether or not uh, text expander works with help scout and so uh, so i can craft the answer um, yes text expander works seamlessly with help scout if you're using the Teams version, you can share all your important snippets across your team. There we go. And, uh, and so then I need to give this an abbreviation that makes sense to me. So I'm going to call it help TE. Or help scout and text expander so if i were to to use this to craft a response to someone in help scout that's that's asking us if our products work together i could start with that that first message where i choose which product we're talking about just add in a name um, and uh We'll say text expander will say okay there we go and now that uh, that response help te there we go and then we'll wrap it up and i'll click okay yep cursor ended up where it needs to be and then off that message you can go to the customer and uh, and that's uh, an easy way to start setting up snippets that you're going to use in Help Scout or whatever um, support system you're using where you have uh, uh, questions you want to answer and you want to make sure you have flexibility in, uh, in your standardized responses. So, okay. Um, I will stop sharing my screen for, for a moment and uh, Matt, so um, before we move on from that, I, I want to share with you a uh, uh, a comment I got from the person that's managing our support team, because uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because of course she's deep into Help Scout, and uh, she wanted to uh, to pass on that Help Scout reports. Are uh, actually, I'll just read her quote. Help Scout reports are a great help to me in tracking support KPIs, and our customer support team is super responsive to feature questions and requests. So, uh, so that's awesome. So, thank you. I appreciate that. 
Okay, so um, how about if, uh, uh, well, actually, before we move on, is there anything else about uh, about the way Help Scout is using Text Expander that you want to hit, or are you ready to move on to some of our favorite tools? Well, let me, I, I did want to just uh, briefly show maybe something about Help Scout. Um, and it kind of ties into this idea of like you, you have a you might have a tool that you've been using for ages that you don't know everything about. I know that is the case for for me with Text Expander because I've used it for many years, and uh, and then I every now and then see someone doing something really uh, quite mind blowing with it. Um, but I do want to show if I can briefly. Do I have this power? If you could let me just oh, share my screen. Of course. And I will just. Can I do that? There we go. You should be able to uh, share now. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Yes, so I wanted to show this is an article you can find if you're uh, if you're into if you're a Help Scout user, you might have seen some of these things, but there's this long article, 27 tips and tricks. So uh, in the context of this conversation, even if you haven't used Help Scout before, I think it's it's useful to know uh, and this is why I said it's important that you have uh, you pick tools which have good resources for learning, uh, because you you may not know all the power that you already have with the tools that you have. So before you go out and go, well, I'm going to choose another another six tools to do this thing, because it, this tool doesn't do it. Maybe it already does. So Help Scout, for example, if you're in, um, <clears throat> especially if you're a new person and you're answering questions from a customer, uh, and you've we have this concept of tags. Just a way of grouping customer conversations, right? But in Help Scout, you can click on the tag. Like if I'm reading this conversation and it's already been tagged as whatever this one says, retailers. Nice little shortcut. If you click on that, you can see all the other conversations where people have used the same tag, and you might find, oh, someone's have already done the hard work of answering this question. I can just steal their excellent answer uh, and then uh, apply it into mine. So little things like this. And this article has a whole bunch of them. I'll find some interesting ones. Say so images there, little little tricks like, oh yeah, I, if I want to be able to create a new conversation to a customer, but in a specific format and with the right subject line, so it's all nicely organized, you know, there's information like this, so sort of a text expandery way to uh, create a, a conversation. Um, did you know, like in Help Scout, oh, actually, if I get email notification of a customer replying to a conversation, I don't even have to go into Help Scout. I can just hit reply in my email inbox, and that will automatically be picked up and put into Help Scout. So I would suggest if you're a Help Scout user or you're interested in doing conversations, customer conversations through Help Scout, this is a really helpful article. Even if you're not, uh, there is probably an equivalent of this for whatever tools you do use. Go have a look um, on their support site and have a little search through, maybe ask their support team, like, hey, am I getting the most out of this tool that I'm paying you money for? Um, or have you got some information for me on how I can get more out of it? Uh, because you might save yourself a whole bunch of time and find out that you've been um, you've been missing out on some cool features. So I just wanted to share that with you, but I will stop sharing now. Awesome, okay. Um, I think we should uh, talk about some of the other tools that we think are are uh, really useful before we move on to questions from the attendees. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to kick off that list? I'll give you uh, some of my sure. favorites. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So there's a very, I could have a very long list of this, all the different tools that I have loved um, doing this work for a long time. Uh, right at the top, despite the alphabetical endness of it, Zapier. Uh, it's a tool probably a lot of people are familiar with. And it's another one where every time I look into it, I realize there's more things that I could be doing with Zapier. Um, but basically, it's a kind of magical wizard tool that connects everything on the internet with everything else on the internet and allows you to pass a lot of, a lot of that data portability. Uh, combined with Zapier means you can do things like get this information from this Gmail email and put it into a, a different tool and, and operate it on it in some way and format it. and 
and it comes out the other end in a way that I can use in a third tool. Um, so I love Zapier. Um, I use it on and off uh, too very heavily. And uh, it's usually the place I go before I will think about changing tools is like, could I do what I want to do using the tool I already have uh, plus Zapier? Zapier is very powerful. And uh, I, I use Zapier for a lot of automation as well. Yeah. Uh, what else? I'll, I'll give you a few. How about that? Okay. Uh, Cloud app uh, is a, in customer service, this is something we do a lot is taking screenshots and annotating screenshots to explain things to customers. Uh, and Cloud app is a tool that makes that really, really fast. Take the screenshot, automatically upload it, um, add the annotations on it, get the URL back, stick that into the support conversation really, really quickly. Uh, very nice. There are other tools that do similar things. And in fact, Zapier has just released theirs, which is called Zappy, I think. Um, there was their internal tool for doing the same thing, but I love those tools. Uh, they are vastly faster than having to do it the old way of uh, either embedding the image in the, in the email, which doesn't always work, uh, which I can tell you from painful experience in uh, email marketing world, or having to upload it like an old school web designer on an FTP site or something which is what I used to do back in the olden days. Uh, so Cloud App, um, another thing that as an Australian working with mostly Europeans and Americans, uh, time zones always drive me mad. Uh, every time zone is a website that gives you a nice visualization of where the time zones cross over. And so I can drag this little line along to where the time that I think is a reasonable hour to be having a meeting. And that will show me what hour it is in the other places that people I'm working with are. Uh, again, lots of different variations on that. Every time zone is just one that I found really nice. Um, and I believe we're gonna have links to these. Uh, we'll be able to share this, all these. Yes. Okay. Yes, so they're, they're, they're in the public group. And uh, uh, so, so they're accessible right now, as a matter of fact. Oh, there you go. Uh, so you can go to all of these right now. Um, Alfred, I love Alfred as well. It's a... I don't even know how to describe it. It does a lot of things, but essentially a keyboard shortcut on your Mac that opens up a little kind of uh, command line essentially. And from there, you can do many, many things, uh, launching applications, doing calculations in line, triggering workflows, getting quite complicated, uh, opening, yeah, searching in your file system and then doing things with the files that you find there. It does, Again, it's a, a tool that does many, many different things. You don't have to understand any of them to get value out of it, even if you just use it for launching apps instead of finding them in your um, you know, file system or in your dock, uh, it'll save you time. So I, I love that. Jeff, have you got some suggestions? Uh, I have to say Alfred is very powerful. I, I use it every day as well. Um, I'm going to throw out some uh, clipboard managers. Because, because having a tool that lets you have multiple items in your, your computer clipboard at the same time can be really handy when you're doing support because you, you might need to, to grab a, a bit of text from, from someplace, or you might need to grab a couple URLs and then put all of that together in a, in a, in a customer support response. So um, for Mac users, the the three that I have on my list are paste, copied, and paste bot. And uh, and for Windows users, Comfort Clipboard, Ditto, and Clipboard Fusion. The those are all uh, uh, great options. And uh, uh, and then also I will add in um, uh, having a tool that you can use to keep track of all of your tasks is really important. Uh, one of my favorites is Trello. And, uh, uh, but but uh, a to-do app of some sort is really useful as well. 100%. Or you can just do what I like. I do use them and we use Asana at HelpScout for managing big projects and things. Uh, and I've tried many, many things over the years. And, and the thing that I've essentially ended up on is using the big chalkboard, which is just here. Uh, attached to the wall 
uh, because it forces me to look at it all day. And so each day I just end up writing like, here are the things that I'm doing tomorrow on this big chalkboard before I go home for the day. When I go home, I mean, I'm in the backyard right now. Uh, before I go downstairs to my house for the day, I just write on the board what I'm gonna do. So uh, it doesn't have to be a software tool to be part of your toolkit. All right, we have uh, about 10 minutes left. So I'm thinking this is a good time to start answering questions. Mike, do we have anything that we need to address? Um, I think you guys have done a great job of answering the major questions. There were some, you know, just general inquiries, I think, um, from both sides, you know, where can people find more information about text expander? Where can people find out more about help scout? I know this is just meant to kind of graze the surface for both of those. So I think, um, pointing that out might help. Okay, sure. Um, actually, this will be an opportunity to show another snippet. Uh, let me start sharing my screen again. And you can learn more about uh, about Text Expander at textexpander.com and Help Scout at helpscout.com. But what I did to make it easier in that uh, shared snippet or that public snippet group that I made, I also included a uh, uh, a snippet with the abbreviation slash slash website. And what that does is give you a nice little uh, uh, pop up where you can choose if you want to go to Help Scout or Text Expander. And then when you click OK, it automatically takes you right to the website. So uh, this is actually something I do a lot instead of using bookmarks for websites that uh, that I need to visit regularly i have a, a, a snippet where i just choose where i need to go from the pop-up while you're there uh, oh, oh go ahead uh, I'm, I'm seeing a couple of questions there if uh, in terms of how much does help scout cost there is a pricing page there but it's also good to know you're on the page right now but we've just extended if you want a free trial with help scout now you've got 90 days because of all the the drama that's happening in the world uh, people are finding it a little bit tough and if you've got customers you need to get back to and you don't want to add another expense right now. Uh, a 90 day free trial, pretty nice way to get started. It's really quick, um, give it a go. Sounds great. Um, okay, and a question that I'm assuming we have, I will just go ahead and answer because I've talked about the, the public group that you can public add group. to Text Expander. Uh, let me show you where that is. Uh, so on the Text Expander website, click support, Click public groups and part way down the page. There it is. Build your customer service toolkit webinar. Click where it says subscribe. It will give you a description of that group. And when you click subscribe to group, the snippets that uh, that I've shown you today, plus the, the list of the tools that we've talked about, plus uh, that that snippet that gets you to the text expander and help scout websites, that's all in that in that group for you. Okay, Mike, do we have other questions? Um, just one one quick comment, you know, Matt had mentioned a free trial and, and text expanders doing the same thing. There's a, a free trial if anyone wants to try that out. Um, Jeff, there were a few questions specifically like around features of, of text expander. Um, one okay. specifically that might help is naming conventions of snippets and then how to kind of find and, and search through your snippets. I think that'd be good to touch on quick. Okay. So naming conventions, what you need to do to start is decide what makes sense to you. And uh, and so that could be maybe when you're setting up a snippet, um, you have, let, let's call it a prefix that you're going to include that lets you know, hey, this sort of snippet is for this type of thing. So maybe um, uh, I would start all of these with SUP for support. Or if it's for sales, I can start them with sale. Or if it's part of our marketing team snippets, I can start them with MAR, you know, something like that so that it's easy for, for me to understand what exactly uh, each snippet is for. I'd also recommend including labels because labels make it much easier for people to, to see exactly what a snippet is for. First, when you're looking at a list, because uh, 
uh, you can look at something like um, like the uh, here we go. Here's that resources one, and I found it by looking in the column on the left, and I could see where it says resources for your support toolkit. You can see that's the label I gave it right here, and uh, and there we go. There's that list with uh, with all of those links that we talked about, and uh, and then right here. You can see there's that abbreviation for it. I like to start abbreviations with punctuation because I know I'm less likely to have a snippet expand when I don't want it to because uh, because I always will have a space after punctuation. So with an abbreviation, I don't have that space. It, it's just a thing that, that works well for me. And uh, okay, so that's naming conventions. Um, one thing that uh, that I found to be incredibly helpful once you you started getting a lot of snippets is to use inline search for finding what it is that you're looking for. So that way you don't have to remember hundreds of snippets or thousands. And uh, and on Mac the keyboard shortcut for that is uh, is command slash on Windows it's control slash on Chrome it's control period. And uh, and the way that would work is. Uh, uh, let's just go ahead and hop back over here and clear everything out. And let's say that I wanted to find this, uh, this snippet that I have that gives me a way to add some some case tags to uh, to a case. But I can't remember exactly what uh, what the abbreviation is. I could type in my case command slash because I'm on the Mac, and I can type in case tags because I know that actually relates to exactly what I'm looking for. And uh, here it is, it's highlighted. I can see in yellow exactly where my words show up. I can see an abbreviation. If I hover over that snippet, I will eventually get a, um, uh, a sort of preview that gives me a little bit about what's in that snippet. And I even get a keyboard shortcut that's dynamically generated so that I don't even have to take my hands off the keyboard to use that snippet. So if I were to click, in this case, I get a little pop-up where I could choose uh, what department is this related to and uh, and what the action was. And then there we go. And now I've got my, uh, my case tags right in there. And uh, so that's, that's how I manage in my brain the long list of snippets that I have to keep track of. It's uh, it's it's coming up with a convention that makes sense for the abbreviation and descriptive tags. And and I'll I'll even put keywords into tags so that that or excuse me into labels so that it makes it easier for me to search for exactly the sort of snippet that I'm looking for because I know what keywords I'll have in each of my uh, uh, labels. Okay, uh, we still have a couple minutes. Mike, do we have any other questions we need to hit? Um, I think you've hit most of them, but as you, you pointed out, if there's anyone else that wants to pop in with another question, we've got time. Um, Jeff, I know, and I'm with Text Expander, so Matt, feel free to add for, for the Help Scout side of things, but I know with Text Expander specifically, there's kind of two versions. There's a single user version and a, a lot of your conversation was also about team. So uh, text expander, there's there's also a team version. So um, just wanted to make sure that was apparent. And um, yeah, I don't think anyone else has any major questions. So if you guys want to touch on anything else, we should be good. All right, Matt, anything that you want to hit before we wrap this up? Uh, no, I think we've covered it. But really what I would say is, and what I was trying to get across, I guess, is don't be like, you know, past me and just go changing tools like wild because um, you get, you know, get sold by someone else recommending it. I mean, obviously, yes, you should use Help Scout, you should use Text Expander. I think both are great products, but uh, I think it's important that you spend some time thinking about what am I actually trying to get done? What job am I trying to do here? Uh, and figure out what those core things are because then you, you can just make better choices. Um, and for me, I would, I would love to see more people building up their kind of set of tools that they can take from job to job uh, and be really productive and come in and hit the ground running uh, with a set of um, 
of things that they know really support the way that they want to work. So that's what I'm all about. Awesome. And, and I will add to that, as you're figuring out what tools you need, prioritize what it is that you need to accomplish now. And, uh, and that will make it a lot easier to decide which tools you need to find first and where you need to invest your time in, in learning how to use something new. All right. Unless we have any other questions that we need to hit, we are uh, out of time. So Matt, thank you so much for, for making time to be part of this webinar today. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. And Mike, thank you for uh, for taking care of all those questions in the chat room and for uh, and for helping us out with uh, with questions that we need to answer. Thank you, guys. And and thank you to everyone for attending. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, and I hope you got some useful information out of this. And uh, and just as a reminder. Yes, there will be a recording of this. So uh, once it's finished processing, you will get an email with a link to uh, to the recording. You can watch it anytime you want, as often as you want. And if you know other people that you think will get value out of this, then please feel free to share the link with them as well. Because like I said at the beginning of the webinar, this is about helping people. And, uh, and if this can help more people, great. Then share that link so that it can help more people. All right, and uh, and thank you again, Matt, for, for joining me. And everyone, thank you again for being here, and I hope that the rest of your day is wonderful. And uh, be sure to check out our other webinars. Uh, you can go to textexpander.com slash webinar to see our upcoming webinars. Uh, we have a beginning webinar coming up on Thursday. Matt, you have other webinars as well. Where should people go to find those? Uh, you will not be surprised to guess, helpscout.com slash webinars, uh, a whole list there as well. Some good stuff, especially now around uh, remote work for people who are suddenly finding themselves doing that. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you again to everyone and have a wonderful day. And uh, we hope to see you at more of our webinars in the future. Bye. Thank you.